Welcome to today's daily Bible devotional. Today is Thursday, April 16th, 2020, and I hope that you're having a great day so far. I'd like to wish happy birthday to a couple of our folks in our church, Mrs. Norma Patino, our Spanish pastor's wife. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Norma. God bless you. Hope you have a great day. And then to one of our young teenage ladies, Esther Davis, it's her birthday today, and I hope that you have a wonderful birthday. Uh, don't forget uh, Sunday at 9.45, a children's Sunday school um, program, Beyond, broadcast. And then at 10.15, our church broadcast. And I want to make one announcement. We're excited uh, today. Um, our road sign that we've had up there for many, many years is down now. And uh, I've been praying for several months for God to provide a new uh, digital sign for us. And because of the um, the generosity of one of our members, uh, a new sign is going up today. And uh, we're excited about it. We'll show it to you. Just drive by, and uh, you'll see it later on. Um, and it's an exciting thing. Thank the Lord for answered prayer and all that he provides for his people and for his church. And uh, we're thankful to the Lord and, and his goodness to us. Now, if you have your Bible with you or around you, if you open it up to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. And I just want to read one verse together with you. And then uh, expound on it a little bit. Matter of fact, this devotional is going to uh, actually be today, uh, tomorrow, Lord willing, and on Monday. It's a three-part devotional. And so I, I, uh, you'll see in just a moment why, uh, but I believe it's going to be very helpful to us. Let's read it together. You follow as I read in verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. So what's behind this um, verse here? And this is actually part of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus uh, preached one day. And a multitude, many thousands of people had gathered around Jesus. And he's on the side of a mountain. And he spends many hours teaching them about kingdom living but not only how they're supposed to live when the kingdom was here on this earth, but also now, at that time, how they were supposed to live and be living as God's people. Uh, one of the statements that Jesus makes in this Sermon on the Mount is uh, just read it to you in verse number 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Uh, what does that mean? Well, in that day, they would have understood it maybe better than we understand it today because salt was a very important mineral or substance to them uh, in that day. But I believe also that the words that Jesus spoke to them, he was also speaking to us. If there was ever a time in our lifetime that we need to be the salt of the earth, it is today. With the virus going on and all the things that are taking place in our world today and in our nation, uh, people need to see the salt of the earth and that's every believer. Now, what does it mean when the Bible says that we are to be the salt of the earth? Uh, what does it mean to those people, and what does it mean to us? Well, salt actually uh, has at least three main functions. It did back then, and it still does today. And today we're going to look at the first function of salt and see how it applies to us as God's people. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing that uh, uh, we're going to look at today, and the main thing is this. Salt is an anti-decay substance or mineral. Uh, salt uh, holds back decay. As a matter of fact, uh, salt kills bacteria. You've got to understand, in that day, uh, they didn't have refrigeration like we have today. They didn't have freezers. They didn't have a way to refrigerate things. And so salt was a preservative that was used uh, to preserve their meat. Now, in the Word of God, there are two substances mentioned uh, that really are, although they're, they're small substances, they have a powerful effect. And the Bible relates to these in a spiritual way. They are actually spiritually opposite forces in the world today. And, of course, salt is one of them. The other is yeast. What is yeast? Well, yeast is actually mold. And in the Word of God, God refers to yeast as being sin. In 1 Corinthians 5, 6, Paul says, Your glory is not good, knowing not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And so, even in the Old Testament, the Jews were instructed not to put yeast in their sacrifices unto God. 
And when they had bread, that they were, when they were celebrating the Passover, they were not to use bread that had yeast in it. Why? Because yeast represented sin. They were instructed in the scriptures to use salt in their sacrifices. Why? Because salt prevented decay. Salt was a fight against sin. Now, how does that relate to Christians today? Well, we're to be the salt of the earth today that God wants us to be. So, uh, how should that happen? How does that happen? We should be helping holding, uh, holding back um, decay in our world today. So, how do we do that? Well, number one, it's this, by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people. You know, when someone gets saved, you know what happens in their lives? The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, but all things are become new. Uh, it becomes a new creature. Um, he begins to, or she begins to put away sin in their lives because sin decays. Let him know that he which convert the sinner from the air of his ways, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. James 5, verse 20. And so, as we share the word of God and people get saved and people get their lives transformed, um, they begin to get sin out of their lives, which is destroying their lives and decaying and, and destroying our nation and our world. And so it's a great help there. And then secondly, how we can um, be the salt of the earth is by standing for truth and godliness. You know, the Bible tells us in Titus chapter 2, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. God says to you and me that have received Christ as our Savior and we have salvation, God says, I want you to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, and I want you to live as salt on the earth. That means at home, that means in the neighborhood, that means at the workplace, that means anywhere or everywhere we go. I remember after I got saved and I worked in the secular world for about nine years total and uh, as far as grocery store I was working in and, and the guys and people that I worked with, many of them were not Christian and believers and, and I was young in the Lord but I was challenged in my life to be salt in front of these people. I tried to witness to my coworkers and I saw many of them saved, uh, several of them saved. And, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I was careful about my talk and I wanted to make sure I was careful about my walk because I didn't want to do anything that would deter them from hearing the message I was giving to them and also from knowing what it was to, and is to be a true Christian. And I can remember seeing some of them um, that uh, they didn't all get saved, they didn't all receive Christ, but many of them changed because I was there working with them. For instance, uh, there were some of my friends that had uh, filthy mouths. They would use God's name in vain. And after knowing that I was a Christian, and, uh, and I didn't talk like that, and I didn't laugh when they told the dirty jokes and things like that, uh, when, whenever I was around, they would stop talking like that. And if every now and then one of them would slip and say a word that they shouldn't have said that they knew was wrong, they would say to me, oops, sorry, Frank, or please excuse me. Uh, it wasn't about me. It was the fact that I wanted to be salt, and they knew that my walk with God I took seriously. And that's the way it should be for all of us today. Um, do you and I live like salt in this world, or do we live like yeast? My prayer today for each and every one of us that know Christ as our personal Savior, that we will ask the Lord to help us by His grace to be salt with those that know us and to be salt in front of those that we meet maybe for the first time or with folks we come in contact with. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. And it's important for you and I today to live like salt. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God, and we thank you for the challenge to all of us today to, to live like the salt of the earth. Uh, Lord, thank you for the instruction you gave back to those in, in that day while you were on this earth, but it still goes for us today. The Bible says the scripture is written for us also. 
And so today, Lord, may we examine our hearts and lives. Are we sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with others so that they can get sin which decays and destroys out of their lives? Are we living godly lives so that others can see Christ in us? Lord, may we accept the challenge and may we be the salt of the earth that you would have us to be. And bless God's people today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Thursday.